and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be tackling a new puzzle by Marty Sears today. Marty's been on the channel, I think, a couple of times before, always with very interesting stuff. And this, well, <laughs> this one is, I was about to say, quite comedy, um, which was, is probably apposite because it's called Which Line Is It Anyway? which I think must be a pun on whose line is it anyway, the, the comedy show. Uh, and the idea is that these lines, um, and looking at the instructions, I think there are seven lines in the grid, and each line is a different type of, or has a different type of Sudoku constraint attaching to it. So one of these is a Remban line, one is a German whisper, one's a thermometer, one's a region sum, one's a palindrome, One's a parity and one's called an unlucky line, <laughs> which is a constraint I've never heard of before. Um, but um, yeah, that's what we're going to have to do is somehow allocate to, to the grey lines one of these constraints and then solve the puzzle. I will read the rules out properly and slowly in due course. I think that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, for the last week or two, what we've been doing is reading out the rules at the very start of the video. and. The, it just feels a bit disconnected to me. So if you don't like listening to the announcements, just use the chapters under the video, which Mark and I have got used to using um, to skip to skip these interesting words about the world of puzzles. And I suppose we should start when thinking about the world of puzzles uh, by congratulating Ding Li Ren on winning the World Chess Championship today. Um, anyone who says that, you know, you know, chess or Sudoku isn't exciting to watch. Well, watch watch what happened this afternoon. Um, that was that was absolutely nail biting, and um, yeah, just a tremendous spectator sport. Um, and anyway, Ding Ding came out on top in the end, and well done to him. Uh, now, what else do I need to tell you about? Well, a couple of days ago, um, I wished I wished all the luck in the world to David who was defending his PhD, I think it was last Friday, um, in astrophysics. And I'm delighted to tell you that we had an email from David to say that, yes, he did successfully defend his PhD. So it's now Dr. David. Um, and David let it be known that actually the person who'd requested that we send the good wishes to him uh, was Nick. And Nick had the previous week defended his PhD also in astrophysics. These are, <laughs> I mean, we have some very intelligent people watching us. It, it constantly brings me to, an, to a state of imposter syndrome, but David and Nick, many, many congratulations on achieving your, your PhDs. That is fantastic news. Um, now, the other thing I need to talk about actually is huge because it's tomorrow, isn't it? Tomorrow is the 1st of May and that means we have Demono's, um, I don't know how to describe it, Demono's Sudoku novel uh, for all our patrons over on Patreon. Four o'clock UK time is when it will go live. And basically it's a complete story interlaced with some Sudoku solving. And you have to solve Sudokus at particular points in the story in order to get access to more of the story. It's a fabulous idea. It's a fabulous story. And um, we really, really hope you're all going to enjoy it. Demono, of course, is famous in Sudoku circles for puzzles like Everything is Roggen, um, which I know many of you will remember fondly or not. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool stuff. And um, yeah, we'd lo we're, we're looking forward to the feedback. So that's four o'clock tomorrow. And if you're not a patron, do think about becoming a patron. Um, it's a couple of bucks a month and it keeps the channel going. And the only other thing to mention is we're expecting quite a lot of, of correct entries uh, for Demono's Hunt because it, I think partly because it's Demono and we think people will want to read the story and they'll dedicate effort to it. The puzzles aren't too bad uh, in terms of difficulty. Um, but if you do get stuck, remember over on, over on the Discord server, there is a special channel devoted to the patrons. Um, and it's a great community over there. Lots of friendly people who are willing to give hints. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I have found when I have lurked there. So um, I think uh, I'd recommend that to you if you do get stuck. Um, and the following people, actually, I need to keep, keep reading out names of people who managed to solve the whole of this month's Nightmare on Sudoku Street from the Skunk Works correctly. So all 19 puzzles, hopefully you can hear the Moonlight Sonatin at the moment, even if I can't. Um, but the following people solved all 19 puzzles. Very well done to Anita Burke, 
Jerome Duman, Grace Mears, Parker Bond, Yan Lim, Ewan McNeil, Ian Van Delft, Richard Clark, Ryan Mustaine, Jim Steinthal, Tim Patterson, Mina Slater, Robin Bonner, Paul Wright, Alexandru Bosinta, Dave Mustang Lang, No Feet McGee, and Matthew Mrakovich. Fantastic solving, one and all. Just a few more names left for this month's hunt, but we'll get to those in the coming days. Now, let me read you the rules to Marty's puzzle. Which line is it anyway? And and you can you can smile with me at what's going on. So we've got normal Sudoku rule supply. Each of the seven line types listed below appears once in the grid. You must determine which line is which. Renban line contains a set of non-repeating consecutive digits in any order. So I don't know how to do this, but let's say this line was a Renban line and we worked out that square was a one. Then we would know that those cells there had to contain the digits one, two, three, four, five, six. That, so these would be the digits one to eight in some order. And we could mix them up, we could do something like this. Um, so they don't have to be in a particular order, but that would be a legitimate way of filling the line. Next, German whisper line. Adjacent digits along the line have a difference of at least five. So if this was the German whisper line and this was a one, this would have to be at least a six. What you couldn't have is make this two and put it next to six because two and six are only four apart, not five, and that would break the rules. Thermometer. Uh, digits are arranged in ascending order from one end of, to the other without repeats. I see, so we've got no bulbs for our thermometers. So if this was a thermometer, it could either be, it's eight cells, isn't it? So it could be, it could go something like this. So that, that would be a legitimate way of filling the line if it was a thermometer, but it could be the other way around as well. So it could do something like this. Just has to make sure it ascends as we go from one end of the line to the other. Region sum line. Along the line, digits uh, within each three by three box have the same total. The line visits at least two different boxes. Right, that's not going to work for this one. Let's pick a different one. It might work for the sort of duck head shaped one. Um, I can't see why it doesn't work for this. If it doesn't work, apologies, but let's just give this one a go. Uh, I'll just highlight various chunks of the line in different colors. So the way this works is you ask which cells the line visits in a three by three box. And you can say, see that these three cells are the cells the line visits. So you add up these three cells and you get a number. Let's say it's 15. Then those cells would have to add up to 15. I've picked the wrong number because that can't be a 15. Let's say they added up to nine. So these add up to nine, these add up to nine, this would have to be a nine, these two would add up to nine, and these two would add up to nine. And that's the way that region sum lines work. Let's restart. Is my clock going today? It is going, that's fabulous. Um, palindrome line. The sequence of digits along the line reads the same in either direction. So, in fact, that's not gonna work. <laughs> I've just worked out that's not a palindrome line. Um, which line can, actually, palindrome line might be a good place to start. I'm not sure how many lines can be a palindrome line. I can't work out whether the long one can be or not. It looks like it might get a bit fishy in the middle of it. That one? Well, maybe this one could be a palindrome line. So the way it would work is um, if this square was a one, that would be a one. Let's see, two, three. Yeah, this one works. Okay, so you have to read the line the same forwards and backwards. So you can see if we, re if we started here, we go one, two, three, four, three, two, one. But if we started here, we'd read exactly the same sequence. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. So it's a bit like the name Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, if you can spell it the same forwards and backwards. Um, now, parity line. All digits on the line have the same parity um, so let's see, can we do that with, I think this line would work for that. So imagine they're all odd digits or all even digits. I think that's okay. Um, and the unlucky line, 
adjacent digits along the line sum to at least 13 adjacent digits so if this was the unlucky line those two cells would add to at least 13 then those two would then those two would then those two would etc etc and that's it so do have a go the way to play as usual is to click the link under the video i think this is about three stars out of five for difficulty uh i think <laughs> i'm not sure about that if, if if you're in any doubt judge it by the length of the video but now i get to play let's get cracking um now so we've got the duck line here oh yes as i was doing the rules i was thinking the palindrome line looked difficult and that's because if you look at this line those two if this was a palindrome that would suggest both ends of the line are the same digit and they couldn't be because they'd be in the same row now this line i don't think can be a palindrome because well the second cell along the line from either direction should be the same digit and they're both in the same box i'm not sure about the long one we'll come back to that can we this one can't be a palindrome because obviously those two are in the same box we worked out this one could be didn't we? this one can't be the two ends are in the same box the two ends are in the same box so hardly any of these lines can be palindromes um let's see if this one can be so what we're looking for is whether digits oh no nah, it can be okay i thought maybe in the middle here it would get congested but those two i think have to be the same digit and they're not in the same box or row um and that seems to be the center of the palindrome six seven eight nine two. yeah okay so it is this cell um okay so the two lines i think there are only two that can be palindromes are this one so let's label this somehow we'll, we'll go to the letter tool that can be a palindrome and this can be a palindrome and just oh bobbins there's, there's a there's also parity line okay so we're going to have to remember that p stands for palindrome not parity um now hang on this this had 11 cells this this line so there's no way this can be a thermometer or a renban because along a thermometer you've got to increase the digits all the way and so you're going to get to at least 11 and that is not a valid sudoku digit and you can't repeat a number on a renban either so this line might be the one we start with perhaps unsurprising given it's so long so this can be a palindrome can it be a german whisper okay so what do we know about german whispers well we know there are a couple of secrets to think about you can never put a five on a german whisper line and that's because let's put a five here and see if it works what are we going to put into this cell and the answer is no valid sudoku digit and that's because we have to put a digit here that's at least five away from five if we go downwards we get to zero or negative numbers and if we go upwards we get to 10 or higher so it just doesn't work um, and the other thing about german whispers lines is that they oscillate polarity what do i mean by that well because we can't put five on the line we can define every cell on this line as either above or below five and if you work it out you'll find that it oscillates so if this was lower than five Let's, let's imagine it's the lowest digit lower than five let's make it one then this digit even if it's the closest it can be to one would still be six and six is the other side of five it's on the high side of five and then this digit would have to be lower than well it would have to be lower than five again so you get oscillation along these lines so what we could say is that those if this was a german whispers line all of these cells would be one polarity and all of those cells there would be the other polarity wow uh, i can't see what's wrong with that um okay that's annoying so so this line might be able to be german whispers as well as palindrome it can't be thermometer oh can it be region sum this is what we did in the example i didn't see when we did the example anything particularly wrong with it well providing we don't make those three squares add up to 15. oh okay so maybe this line is much less restricted than i thought parity line 
Oh, good grief. I think it can even be one of those, can't it? If, if this line contains only the same parity, look at row 2. That would imply these five digits are the same parity, so they would have to be odd because there aren't four even digits in row 2. But I can't see a configuration that breaks that, so that it might be able to be a parity line. And what? Oh, the unlucky line. Adjacent digits along the line have to sum to at least 13. Is that in some way problematic? That that rule actually is going to be more problematic for. Yeah, I mean, I can see this one. That's tricky for this line because. If you think about it, it's got a, it's got a sort, it's got the flavour of German whisper restriction about it, hasn't it? Adjacent digits on the line have to sum to at least thirteen. Well, that means you can never put one, two, or three on the line, because if you put one, two, or three on the line, the next digit's going to have to be twelve, eleven, or ten, and they are not valid. And so, right, so in this box, if this was the unlucky line you'd have to put one, two, and three into those two cells, and that's going to be a tight squeeze. Um, yes, so I can, I, I, I can, maybe this is the way to start, because this line as well, you can't put, it's sort of similar, isn't it? I can hide one and two, say, in this domino, but I can't hide one, two, and three, so this can't be the unlucky line. This can't be the unlucky line. I can't put one, two, and three into that cell. So none of those can be unlucky. What about this one? No, that one's okay, I think. Oh, bobbins. Um, this one can be, this long one can be unlucky as well because we've got four places for ones, twos, and threes in row two. I'm not doing, I haven't spotted how to break into this yet. Um, what's it going to be then? What about, let's just check region sum. Region sum is often, oh, hang on. Yes, especially as didn't it say the line, yes, the line, visits at least two boxes so so we can get rid of well okay we can get rid of this one again it might be actually worth thinking about what this one can be um, if this doesn't work but let, let's come back to that can this one this one can't be region sum because we'd be saying that cell is the same number as uh, I'm not sure actually are based on the rules. Let me just read the rules again. Along the line, digits within each 3x3 three three box have the same total. Yeah, so it's not talking about going in and out of boxes. So I was wondering whether we could argue those three cells were a different total to those five. In fact, it doesn't matter, does it? Because even if we're saying it's only those five cells that we're equating with green, the triangular number for 5 is 15, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and I can't write 15 into there. And it might be, actually, the more natural reading of the rules is that I'm adding all of those digits together, in which case we're getting to at least 36, and I definitely can't write 36 into that cell. So, so this is not region sum. We know that's not region sum. That's not region sum because it's all in the same box. This one is not region sum because that cell can't add up to 28, which is the minimum I can make seven different digits add up to. What about this one? Well, that one could be region sum, probably. If this one was region sum, that digit and that digit would be the same number. <laughs> I say that as a curiosity, but without much hope that it's useful. What about this one? This one well, hmm, that's this one is suspicious to me, I have to say. This looks like it is region sum. And that's because it's got the classic 2 versus 5 geometry. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because if we're saying these two cells add up to the same as those 5 cells, well, the minimum number for 5 cells is 15. And 15 is, is getting towards the top end of what you can make a domino add up to. So these would be from 6, 7, 8, and 9. And, and then we could play another trick, which is that you couldn't then put a green digit on this line. 
because if that digit did turn out to be one of these green digits, look, in fact, let's do it this way. Let's say we worked out that we tried to argue this was, this was the green digit. That's implying that yellow is the sum of four different Sudoku digits. Now, four different Sudoku digits add up to at least 10, and I can't write 10 into that cell. Ergo, that cell cannot be green. Ergo, let's make that green again. Green would be down here, and then green would be over there. Hmm. I don't know. That that feels that this one looks like it's the region sum line to me. But actually, the weird thing is that most of these lines seem to have several things they can be. This line was perhaps the one that I was thinking was the most constrained. Right. What do we say? Oh, this line can definitely be a Renban. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven cell line. So it can be a Renban. Can it be a whisper? If it's a whisper, it can't have five on it. So five would go here. Oh. P was, was P palindrome or parity? P was palindrome, wasn't it? Okay. That's quite interesting. If this is a German whisper line, because five has to go there, this one couldn't be palindrome, because it's it's the equivalent of a five in either of those two cells by palindrome would be those two cells, and that given five looks deeply suspicious there, doesn't it, to stop that happening? And that would force that to be palindrome. So I do wonder if this is whisper, but why? Why is it whisper when it can be all these other things? I don't know. I can't see immediately why this can't be whisper. Let me just check alternation. Oh. Um. Hang on, let me just think about that. So what I'm noticing is that if we do alternating polarity along this line, I think those four orange squares are all of the same polarity, which means this is either a one, two, three, four quadruple or it's a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. Oh, yeah, okay, so the other, so these two squares would actually be from four or six and five. Because, yeah, what I'm thinking is the, the, the other, there's sort of three secrets about German whispers. There's the polarity, there's the fact you can't put five on it, and then there's the fact that four and six have very few possible partners on the lines um, because they only have one natural partner so a four can only go with a nine and a six can only go with a one so given how monogamous four and six are imagine imagine these cells were low one two three and four where do you put six in this box well you can't put six in any of those three squares which would be their only possible positions on the whisper because they would force double ones into these cells so six would have to go down here along with five. So this would be a five, six pair. I don't know, sorry, I'm getting bogged down here. This, this line, I can't convince myself it's not a whisper. I suspect even it might be a whisper because I like what it does with the, pal the P line here. Um, right, can, uh, this line can be a therm. I thought this line was restricted so far. The, the, the list is Renban, German whispers and thermometers, and it can be all of them. Oh, okay, it cannot be region sum. It definitely cannot be region sum. It cannot be palindrome. It cannot be parity. There's no way that can be a parity line. There are not seven different digits of the same parity in Sudoku. Unlucky line. And we know it's not unlucky because we can't hide one, two, and three. So this line is either Renban, so let's give it an R for that, German Whisper, which we'll say is G, or T. So it's an RG or a T line. Okay. 
Um, I don't know if this is the best way to do this. To actually work on lines rather. Well, when I tried to do it by constraint, I got nowhere. So I am going to try and do it by line for a bit longer. Let's try this line because I can see this one can't be region sum or parity or unlucky. It's, it's similar to this one. It's got. Ah, if it's Renban. Right, if it's Renban, those two digits are the same digit. Because if it's a Renban line, this digit can't reappear on its own line and it can't reappear in its own column. So its only position in the box would be here. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it can be Renban. So it could be Renban. What if it's Whisper? If it's wi ah well okay that this one is not whisper i can do that relatively straightforwardly because of course if this line is a whisper line it can't have five on it and i can't put five in those squares by sudoku so there'd be nowhere in that box for five to go ah okay what about thermometer one two it's well one oh it's an eight cell line isn't it oh okay so if it's thermometer it's the same effect those two digits are the same because I can't repeat a digit along a thermometer either. Um, we can't be region sum, can't be palindrome, can't be parity, and it can't be unlucky. So this one has even less options than this one. This is this one is either R or T. It's not possible that it's um, um, it's not possible for this one. To be G. So this is R and R or T. I'm tempted to check this one now because the geometry of this one is very similar to the well, the geometry of this one is similar to the geometry of this one. There's just one cell sticking out of the box, which immediately rules region sum line out of this one. Uh, Renban, ah, well, Renban would force those two to be the same. And thermometer would force these two to be the same. Why? Right, what well, can this be? Well, actually, here's a point. If this one, if I can prove this one is just R, G or T, I've got an R, G, T triple with lines, which would mean the other lines would have to be the other four, because these three would have to be R, G and T. Um, right, and I, R and T, I haven't thought about G for this one. So can this be Whisper? That would have to be a 5 in the corner. What's the parity? What's the polarity? Um, that one, let's just label that one polarity. So those two are the same polarity. That's the same polarity. That one's the same. Uh, hang on, I'm getting five of that polarity. Right, let's do this slowly. So if this is green, these two are both blue. So that's blue. That's blue. That's blue. That doesn't work. That's impossible. Uh, because there are not five diff different digits. There are not five digits of either high or low polarity between one and nine. So we can hide the five here. But this cannot be a set of one, two, three, four, because there are five digits, and it cannot be a set of six, seven, eight, nine, because there are five digits. So that doesn't work. So this is not a G. So it's R or T. It's not region sum. It's not palindrome. It's not parity. There are not however many digits there are there of the same parity, and we can't put one, two, and three here. Right. So now this is G, which is what I thought it might be. Um, because and that's because this one is R or T and I've now got an RT pair in lines. So this is an RT pair in lines, which means this one cannot be R or T. So it's only left with the ability to be G, which means five is down here. Um, I'm going to switch away from letters now in case I can get away with it. So there's a five over here by Sudoku. Um, and, and now we can do the polarity shading of this line. So dup, 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 dup. These are all the same. Um, which means that these are all the same. I don't like orange. I don't want to use orange. I'm going to use blue. Um, and so this is either one, two, three, four, or six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Okay. So these two digits now 
are either four or six. There's a four or six here along with a five. Ah, but that means this, ah, so that, right, of course. And that means this is the palindrome. This is it. This is the point of all this beautiful work. Right, because, because there's a five in one of these and you cannot put five in there. If this was a palindrome line, that would, that's what would be forced. This is not a palindrome line, which means this is a palindrome line, which means we can color it in. So those two digits are the same. These two digits are the same. These two digits are the same. These two digits are the same. Uh, what color? I go orange. These two digits are the same. Um, these, are, these are the decisions that we, are, we have to wrestle with. There we go. I don't like the colors I've chosen there, but anyway, that's, and this digit is a nothing because it's the middle of the palindrome. Ah, ooh. Right, so I'm going to change my colouring slightly here because look at the red digit. Now the red digit, these two, these two cells contain the same digit, sees the whole of blue, which means that this digit has to be a green digit because it can't be a five and it can't be a blue digit. So those two digits are the same. Not, well, they're the same, but they're also from the green, the green polarity of whisper. Uh, I thought that would actually, mm, sorry, I thought that might do something. Um, I don't know. Okay, so what's this line now? Ah, this line can't be what can't be the the, the uh, parity line now. That's really lovely, actually. It can't be a, it can't be a parity line. Because one of those digits is a five, an odd number, and one of them is a four or a six, which is an even number. So this line doesn't contain the same parity, and you can't make those two add up to 13 either. So it's not that one. It's not, it's, this line is not unlucky. So this line is not RGT. Hang on, what is this line then? It's not RGT. Region sum. Can it be region sum? If it was region sum, it would be powerful indeed, because both of those would have to be a nine. It's not palindrome, because palindrome is gone. I oh, see. So it, it, we're actually. Yeah, it is. It's only we've only got one option left for this line. It's forced now because it can't be RGT. It's not palindrome. And we've just shown it's not unlucky or parity, so it is region sum. And that is so pretty because now you can see we've got single digit totals for this box and this box. How do I make those two add up to a single digit total? I've got to remove, I've got to remove the six from them. So they're a four or five pair. These are nines. These three digits have to add up to nine without using five. So they've got to be two, three, four, or one, two, six, and they definitely involve a two. And we now know the polarity of, of blue because it can't include four. So these are high. This is six, seven, eight, nine. And we can't put the six in the middle of the line. So there's a six on one end of the line. And that's going to be next to its monogamous friend, the one. And these three digits are a one, two, three, triple. And these two digits now are from the green set. So these are one, two, three, or four. That's not a one because we know the one is next to the six. That one of these is definitely a six. This square is definitely not a nine by Sudoku. And, and now we're stuck. Right, that square's not a five by Sudoku. That square's not a six by Sudoku. Why have I got five in here? I shouldn't have five in here. Two, three, four. Hang on, I've put the wrong options in here. Two, three, four, or one, two, six were the two options. Right, let's just get rid of things that we can't have. Can't have six here. Um, no, that hasn't, that hasn't improved. That hasn't improved the situation, I'm afraid. 
Right. right. Okay. Right. So let's take stock again. Then we've got we've got the RT pair. That doesn't look right. Well, okay. This one is not is this one is not the thermometer because it's got a five in the wrong place. Yeah, this is not a thermometer because if there's a five in one of those three positions, what on earth is this digit? That's the question we should ask. And if we're going to try and go up, well, if we made that a five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's at least a ten. And if we're going to try and say this is the lowest digit, one, two, three, four, five, that should, we can't put a five in this row. So this is not a thermometer. So this one is, loses its T. Ah, well, it should lose its T. I was trying to make it lose its T. Ah, there we go. And this one loses its R. So now, oh, I see, I see, right, okay. So therefore, remember what we said about how this one worked. This digit has to find a home in box six and it can't repeat on the line. So now that digit can't go there. So it goes there. So that's a green digit and is a one, two, three or four. And this digit is a one or a nine by the power of Renban this. And that's because this is an eight cell line. Um, so it's either the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or it's the digits two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But whatever this digit is cannot appear on this line anywhere because it sees the, this cell sees the whole of the line. So it has to be a digit that's capable of not being on an eight cell Renban. So it's got to be an extreme digit. So Ah, and it goes up there, of course. Oh, that's so cl it's so close to being pretty, isn't it? If that was the one, I'd know this was the nine. I'd know the makeup of this Renban. Ah, no, all right, I'm going to do something easier because this one is the T, which means this one is a thermometer and that is a nine cell thermometer. <laughs> so this one has the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on it. And that can't be the nine. So that's the one. So that's going to, we could just fill this in. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one's got to be a six. It's the same as that one. So one of these two is a six, not an F. I want to go. <laughs> one of these is a six. Ah, this, this square is a three by the power of one, two, fourness. So that square is a three. Ah, don't believe it. That's very mean. Somehow these threes don't do don't do me any favors. Uh, okay, so three is in one of these two cells. This square is no longer a three. Um, oh right, look, four is now ruled out of these squares, which had to add up to nine. So they're not two, three, four. They're one, two, six now. Let's just let's just put that in and see what we can get rid of. We can get rid of six from that one. No, we can't really get rid of very much actually. Oh, six is looking at that square. So this is the six and that is the one and that's what we wanted. That's exactly the way around we wanted this. So that becomes nine. This becomes nine. This Renban is now well, it's almost, well, we know what it is, but it's almost become a bit redundant knowing this is nine. We know these are the numbers one to one to eight without including three, uh, which I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. Um, this squares. Oh, where does nine go in this box? Only there. So that's a nine. That's a nine by Sudoku. This is a two, three pair. That's not nine. Just work that out. This is a seven, eight pair. This square's not a two. 
Where does three go in the central box? It's got to go here. I've not been on the lookout for threes in corners, actually. We've still got the opportunity for any of those. That could be a three. Maybe. Oh, oh no, it can't. <laughs> no sooner did I have the thought, then it's... Yeah, I'm, look, it's broken. Three, three, that's a three. And that stops that being a three in the corner. Bobbins. All right, there are four threes looking at box three. So we get a three here. And there are... Oh, I could still get a three in the corner there if this if I can prove this is a three. So if this is a three, this is not going to be seven because three and seven are only four apart. So why is this three eight rather than two seven? I, oh, I don't know, but what I should do is these digits because these are going to reflect on the palindrome, aren't they? So they're four, seven and eight. Yes, okay, where does 8 go in this box? Well, using the 7-8 pair, it goes in orange. So that's 8, that's 8. I've just realised I could have done that from being the final digit in column 4. Whoops. Uh, that's 7, so that's 4, so that's 4, so that's 4, that's 5. Oh, this is so pretty. It is so pretty, this. 1, 2. I would... I would guess there's very few things this can be two four or six but it's got to go there as well I think that could be either I'm not sure these squares are two four and six from the column these squares are so the, the right so those squares are odd these squares were even So does that tell us this line? I've, I've forgotten what. I've got the unlucky line to do, which is digits add up to at least 13. And I've got the parity line. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, so I was right to think about parity because these two are not the same parity self-evidently. That's even. That's odd. So this is not the parity line, which means that's the parity line. And this is the unlucky line. And those two squares have to add up to at least 13, and I can fill them in. That's 7, that's 6. This is now not 6. This is 2 or 4. Oh, uh, no, okay. Um, these are adding to at least 13. So this needs to be quite a high number. It's got to be 6 or 7, because it can't be 8 or 9. So, that, so this digit's 6 or 7, because... It, it, these two have to add up to 13 and that cannot be 8 or 9 so it must be 6 or 7 that's the only way that's going to work so that digit which can't be 9 does that have to be 8 yeah it can't be 6 7 it can't be 9 it must be 8 if we made it 5 we can't make this domino add up to 13 so this digit this digit is 5 then because this this is it's really lovely actually how this line works surprising um that that digit the highest value it can have is five but the, to make 13 we need it to be that five and then that digit is nine because it can't possibly be a four that will not work so the five does some little bit of sudoku i mean it is outrageous that these constructors make me do sudoku after 40 minutes of their sudoku puzzle um, right, can we get rid of anything? We get a 2 or a 5 in the corner. We've got, that's not 5, is it? So this is 1 or 2. Oh, I see, that's pretty. So that's become a 2, 4 pair somehow, and I think that means this square's got to be a 1, which fills in all those squares. And therefore, 5 goes in the corner, this becomes a 1. Ooh, can we do these squares now? Probably. 2, 6, 7 and 8. So 6 goes here. This is 2, 7 and 8. That's 2. So that's 2. So that's 2. That's 3. Oh, this is guy. I see where this is going. I see what you've done here. Look, this 3 is beautiful for many reasons. This now can't be 7 because it would only be 4 apart. So that's 8. That fixes the 8-7 pair above it, but much more importantly, <laughs> that's three in the corner, that's three in the spot, 
light losing its religion. Uh, this is a one. Uh, these squares are two, five, and something. Two, four, five. Ah, that's a five. So this is a two, four pair. Now what's going on in this row? Sixes, sevens, and eights to place. Uh, bar humbug. I don't see how to do that. What about... Um, okay, I'm not sure actually. Why is this not just filling itself in? That is the question. Have we got, is there some Sudoku I'm meant to be doing? No doubt, I mean, no doubt that's what we're missing. Uh, what about this row? Two, six, seven, and eight. No, that was the wrong choice, wasn't it? That doesn't seem. Oh, this is not a one. Oh, sorry, I'm not seeing how to do this, actually. What about this row, then? One, four, five, and six. That's four, five, or six. I don't know if that's even worth memorialising. Eight. Two, four. I've got two, for, no, hang on, this isn't two, four. I've got a four in this column. Oh, that's probably what we're getting wrong then. Two and seven. Oh, seven and... Oh, hang on. Some, I've got... How have I done this? This scanning is abysmal over here. I managed to put seven there with the seven above it and two four here with a four above it. Oh, good grief. Okay, so this is what? Let's just do this carefully. Four and eight, which is actually totally resolved. Okay, so this is going to help, I think. And now I've got a six, seven pair in that column. And these two squares, taking it very slowly, are two and seven, and that's resolved. And I'm a bit relieved about that because I couldn't see how on earth to finish it. Ah, I've now got, well, I've now forced a two onto this line. And wasn't this line a line that was all about parity? That was the naughty line, the, the unlucky line. So this is a parity line, so that's got to be a six because we know it's an even line now. So these squares are not six or four, so they're two and eight. And look, there's an eight at the top, lovely. Eight and two go in. So that squares a one by the power of Sudoku. These square, oh, this is a seven, so that's a seven, that's a six. We need four, five, and nine, so that's a four in the corner. That's a nine, that's a five. Uh, this is a one, so that's a two, that's a one, that's a six, that's a two. And now I think it looks like we're, we're home and host, <laughs> but for a bit of a ricket on the old Sudoku front. So that's a four and that should be a five. Let's just double check and click tick. Yay, 39 minutes. Not a, I don't know, was that dreadful time? It didn't feel like a dreadful time. I don't think that was a too easy a puzzle, actually. I think... It depends on how you approach the whole question of allocating stuff to lines. If you start it by the way I did, which is by going through the line options and trying to see which lines could be that option, that was bad. That was definitely bad. The way to do it is to say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to pick a line. And if, if you happen to pick the right lines, which were, I think, these three, you could quickly narrow them down so, as we did to what was it an rtg triple so the key to this is to find the rtg triple <laughs> only it's sort of an, a very unusual triple because it applies to line constraints rather than digits very very pretty puzzle marty enjoyed that very much indeed i hope you guys did too i hope you had a go let me know in the comments how you got on i do enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic